Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Basil Considine. I am here from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to talk about planning presentations using PowerPoint. This is a targeted skills-based webinar that will explore, as I said, planning presentations in PowerPoint. So we are going to look at a specific assignment from the HCAD program. We are going to discuss general principles for PowerPoint presentations. And then we're going to finish with a hands-on demonstration about how to begin setting up and planning these things. So if you are new to PowerPoint, don't worry. I'm going to be sharing the screen to show PowerPoint and how to do basic functions while narrating as I go. A couple things before we begin. First, this is one of several webinars that we have about HCAD courses this term. You can find on our webinar archive that we have a sorted catalog of offerings related to different programs and different courses. So if you scroll down to the tabbed view that you see here and click on HCAD, you'll see all of the current tie-ins and we will update that as the term goes on and new ones are added to the webinar guide. All right, so we're going to start with looking at those PowerPoint core presentation principles. We're going to move on to discussing HCAD's uh, sorry, that should be HCAD 201's Week 5 Assignment 1, and we're going to finish with Outline and Drafting. Now, as a practical illustration of some of the things we're going to talk about, it is always important to do a practice run, because a practice run will help you catch things, like just a moment ago, review of HCAD's Week 5, oh wait, it's not an HCAD ed, uh, class, it's HCAD 201 specifically that's important to mention here. So if this happens to you when you're doing your practice run, it is always a good idea to fix something right then and there when you're doing a practice run because that minimizes the chance that you will uh, forget to do it. Now, some people take the opinion that you should write a note and then continue. Uh, if you are primarily checking timing, that will help you end up with the ballpark figure. Uh, but I would still recommend that you actually pause and do the correction because this is how fast it is. So I'm sharing my screen here and I just press escape and I can type in the change and then I press command enter on my Mac or control enter if you're on a PC. And we're back there and the change is done. You don't need to worry about it. So it takes literally just a few seconds to make that change and then you know that it is done. So when you, you are practicing your presentation, it's good to do a round where you are looking primarily at the visual content of the slides because that keeps your attention focused. And then when you are coming back in a separate round and you're checking the content of the text that you are presenting, then you can focus just on that, knowing that you've already spent a round looking at the slide contents. Okay, let's continue on. So understanding PowerPoint presentation principles. First thing, say, keep in mind that it's not about you. Now that said, you always want to make sure you're exploiting the advantages of a medium. And po good PowerPoint slides can focus attention, but a great way to lose it is to spend too much text explaining or describing something. So this bullet here, minimize your self-introduction to focus audience attention on the content. It may have the idea I want, but I can go through and actually take out a lot of words here without losing the meaning here. And that produces a much more concise, minimize self-introduction to focus attention on content. I could even perhaps take out the word attention and make an even more concise bullet there. And so if you have that thought, oh, I, I don't think I need this when you are editing your slides, it's a good idea to act on that. So I could, for example, exit out, just hit escape, go ahead, cross that out, and I'm back here already. So again, doing a immediate correction takes just seconds to do, and because it's so fast, doesn't really take away from the focus. Use the slide content as a summary guide to what you say. Supplement and enhance the slide content with spoken remarks. 
We'll follow up on that one a little bit later. And only use relevant graphics. Now, one of the things to keep in mind here is how full the slide is of information. There are times when you're showing something to make a point, like you say there are many lists to, there's either, there are many things that you could list for uh, reasons to do X, and then you have a big list. Well, showing the list makes a point. You don't need to read through it. Similarly, you want to keep in mind that there is a maximum point where having more text and more information on, on the slide is just distracting rather than helpful. So you should either break it up or simplify what you are showing. Because you'll be giving both your visual presentation and the spoken remarks that accompany it. So let's distill that to some rules of thumb. First, rule of thumb, not absolute commandment, but in general, no more than five main bullet points per slide. Exception being if you're showing a list of things to make a point and, as I said, not reading it all out, but showing it and talking about select aspects. Use a larger font. I'm going to suggest a minimum 18 point font size. And the purpose of this is to both improve the readability, especially if someone is using a smaller screen than you designed the presentation on or if they're in the back of a room, and also to have another control about how much text fits on the slide so you're following that principle of giving them only what is most relevant now. Don't do a word-for-word -word reading of the slide text. That would be boring and redundant. The audience can read your slides much faster than you can say them out loud, so it works best as a guide or a memory aid to help structure the things that you are telling them. And uh, if there is something that they, you need to specifically discuss, like a quotation to show, okay, but that's the exception rather than the general rule. Make sure that your slide remains readable, whether that's in terms of the amount of text, placement of the text, size of the text, covering it up with graphics, or having things like lots of colors and stuff like that. Uh, we want your color and font choices to be simple, meaning not a huge variety, and that there's high contrast, meaning it's easy to read whatever choices you make. Um, in general, I would recommend staying away from red because that does run into red color blindness for some people. And if you do have to have a lot of, of text, use some method of highlighting the most important passages. And in the same vein, keep your images relevant. It might may be handy to have a cute otter in your presenting things to family. But if you're doing a business presentation, is that a productive use of time? So know your audience, know what the task is, know what the purpose of including an image or other visual reference. At this point, let's look at the specifics for HCAD 201's week five assignment. And I've taken the liberty of reformatting the instructions, not changing them, but reformatting the presentation and of those for clarity here. So first of all, the assignment description begins with this sentence about the purpose. And that is really a preamble. It's something that's you know, kind of gives you an idea of, oh, here's why we're doing it, all right. But it's not a list of the specific tasks that you're going to be doing, or it's not a itemized list. So it, by separating it from the main instructions, we can say, okay, we'll use this to think about the big picture, and what follows will be the detailed stuff that we need to really focus on. Now, you saw me mention earlier that uh, the purpose of using the, these slides with only a certain number of bullets and without too much text is to uh, focus the attention on the most relevant things. In this case, uh, this is one of those exceptions where there's a specific text that is relevant and being discussed, and so it's helpful to show. Now, if I just read all this text and moved on to the next slide, that would be boring and redundant because everyone here would be capable of reading this. But if I were to read specific passages and then discuss them in turn, yeah, that's something different. In this case, 
I have uh, used some visual formatting where I took what was a whole paragraph at the top with four sentences and I said, okay, so there are two sentences that are leading in the imagine that and you have noticed an increasing number and then there are these specific tasks to help educate a, the team you decided to prepare a presentation and the rationale you hope that the presentation will address common health insurance questions and by putting those in sub bullets of the paragraph it makes it more clear okay this is subordinate to the main idea of those first two sentences then we have in specific instructions okay do the reading and prepare the powerpoint presentation following the outline and rubric that follow okay and here we have a essentially slide by slide outline so that tells you how long this presentation should be some instructions like having speaker notes and there's a powerpoint template that's provided for that great if you look at the rubric we see okay uh, this recaps the outline here saying okay you should have these to get full credit and if we look at this we see okay uh, actually if you total this up one two three four five six seven uh, we see that that count six to eight slides that is discounting the reference slide and because the reference slide is not part of the core presentation so the, the math works if we are totaling the uh, content slides not the slide introducing the purpose of the presentation and not counting the reference slide and uh, okay so we look at this and see we've got a guide for what we need um, this should not be more than six to eight slides plus the intro and reference so if you have your complete slide deck ends up being fewer than eight slides you've got a problem if it ends up being more than 10 slides total it's counting the intro and reference ones then you also have a problem because you're getting a fair portion of this grade to are you doing all these things including keeping it in the target length all right that's very helpful to know because some assignments have more open-ended presentations all right for this next step I'm going to actually load up that PowerPoint template that was provided for this class and let's get to work. So I have here the template that's provided for the course. And so go ahead and fill in these placeholders here, the name, the date of the presentation. So let's make this 14 February 2022. And there is a range of um, lengths that people use for titles. Here's another rule of thumb. Aim for 12 words or fewer. Why? Because that's a good target and it helps keep your text more focused. Now this title here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten words. So it's in that ballpark. Uh, that is something where if you aim for that and it ends up being a little bit longer, you'll be okay. But in general, more concise, more focused helps you plan a presentation that is also more concise and more focused. Now, if we uh, look at the outline here, okay, one slide introducing the purpose of the presentation. Uh, so let's look, look at this here and say okay that's going to be this slide here and remember if we count this one two three four five six six eight so this introduction slide as with the title slide is not being counted it seems towards uh, what the presentation is going to be on so looking at this because they have uh, provided these notes here uh, I'm just going to delete this text here, keep this as a reminder. I'm going to highlight it so it's clear that it's something to delete later. And then here, uh, looking at this, let's go ahead and align this. 
And I'm just going to help make sure I focus on everything by taking the, the specific instructions and adding them to each slide that I'm going to be doing things on. And in this case, I can go ahead and just start here and say, oh, this template is actually set up with that already. Let me just double check. Uh, insurer benefits, cost sharing, deductible, copay, and coinsurance. Now this define and explain thing, that's an instruction to me for what to do. The audience doesn't need that. So I'm going to take that out and I'm going to reduce the bullet level, which also has the benefit of making this larger. And I'm going to even go ahead and expand that size to 18 point to fit the earlier guidance I gave you. Now there are different places you could have these definitions. You could have it presenting here as a sub bullet, in which case I would recommend considering using an animation by going to the animation pane and selecting the text you want to have that animation and just use the simple appear thing. And what this means is that when I am showing this, let me just add a few more of these. So when I'm adding these, how this will work is when I'm actually running this slide, and you can do a quick check again by using the shortcut command enter on a Mac or control enter on a PC to open up this slide in presenter mode. When I hit the any key, that will pop open the first animation, the second, the third, and so on and so forth. And the benefit of this is it focuses the reader's attention on the big picture first. And then as you start discussing a definition, then that becomes available. So it's not distracting and before you get to that, uh, but they will have the benefit of everything on the slide when you're done discussing all of those things. So now, you don't want to take too much uh, space here. So these definitions should be concise. Very likely you would have more concise definitions here than you're discussing, but you have one or two paragraphs normally for your that discussion. All right, now you'll see I've also done some minor adjustment of the area that the text is showing up here, uh, changing what that was on the template to give a little bit more space there. Uh, provided that you are given the template and, and uh, not told, don't alter this because there's going to be a vase of flowers at the bottom of the screen or something like that. If that's not the case, then it, make good use of the slide space. But here, because it is starting with this list here where we see just those higher level things, even though it becomes much more dense as I add those, the reader is only seeing one of those new definitions at a time. So that helps keep things simple and focused. All right, now you do have the option here, they say, of splitting that discussion to more than one slide. So if it starts to look pretty dense, well, you, this is one of those areas where you do have the option of doing that. And if you say, okay, this is looking pretty dense, I want to split that, okay, that's fine. We'll just select this, we'll cut this, you can go to Edit Cut, or in my case, press Command X, Control X if you're on a PC, and paste that, Control V, Command V, or Edit Paste. And now we have that split onto two different sides. Now here, this is an instruction for what should go here, and it would be not a bad idea to take that and say, okay, well, they've given me a list of things that I can discuss here. Uh, that is more detailed than government plans, including Medicare and Medicaid. All right, so this is an instruction, set of instructions on what to do, and uh, you know, suggestions, I'd just say, uh, generally are very strong advice. 
Now, we can take overview out here because if we have Medicare and Medicaid there, they know we're talking about that. And then I can trim this down to, okay, overview and population served. Brief history. Patients access issues. You probably don't want just access issues because otherwise it could be access issues for, say, providers using the paperwork re for reimbursement. Now, you might be wondering, why did I just reorganize the text there. Well, patients access issues, managers operations considerations. If we start with who has the issue, it helps us focus the discussion a little bit more and it is more concise. Now looking at this here, if I go check the font, okay, that's the 18 point font that I'm recommending. Now this text here, it's if this was all I was having on the slides, you can see how much white space there is here. And but with all that text being clustered there by itself is not the most readable in that if I increase the line spacing here, the extra white space around it makes it easier to read each of those bullets. And it also helps me better conceive what's going on here. You know, are these bullets here just going to be what the reader sees or am I going to be adding more? If I'm going to be adding more, yeah, I'd probably uh, just want to split this off onto another slide. Now, the uh, configuration of your PowerPoint program may make it more or less easy to view this next thing. I'm going to resize this window a little bit. So you can see at the bottom, there is this speaker notes section where you can type or copy and paste notes for your presentation. What a lot of people don't know is that you can adjust the size of this by clicking and dragging on this line. So once you've got your basic notes set up on the slide, you can now look look at this and then just type directly in those one or two paragraphs of text. And w when you are presenting, there are a variety of things that you can see here. But if you look at this menu dropping down here, there is the presenter view. And the presenter view looks like this. And you can see that the presenter view has a timeline of the different slides at the bottom. It shows a slide that's currently running in the upper left hand corner and your speaker notes on the right. And this is also something where you can click and drag to change the size. Because if you're presenting, you're, you're probably going to be using your notes the most and uh, using the, the preview of the slide coming. And that's the one over here and the view of the slide that's currently displayed using just as memory aids, but most of the time you'll be focusing on reading your notes here. Now, oh, just a reminder about this requirement to cite and reference your notes. So, okay, include parenthetical citations, author date. And uh, if there's something where you, something you're presenting, you're showing on the slide that comes from a different source, uh, give us a, the slide there. Give that, that information on the slide because as this instruction reminds us, your citation should be in the PowerPoint slide as well as the speaker notes. And you should only have, have things on your references slide if you have cited them in your speaker notes and on the visible text on the slide. All right, so we have, just to recap, we have gone ahead and we have discussed some core principles of PowerPoint presentations. We have reviewed Healthcare Administration 201's Week 5 Assignment 1, the Health Insurance Presentation Assignment. We've looked at how to put this into practice in outlining and drafting the presentation using PowerPoint. And let's look through here and see what do we have. Well, good reminder to keep that this count here 
does not include the title slide. So same thing with here, the set six, eight slides, that is not counting the title slide, that's not counting the intro slide, that's not counting the reference slide. So you should end up with total, absolute total on the deck, nine to 11 slides. And the template helpfully gives you the main areas, but you should still follow the principles in editing that for conciseness and making sure that you are doing all the things that you feel will make this a superior presentation. And in general, keeping it simple, keeping it direct, easy to read, and using the slide organization as a kind of guide or memory aid to focus people's attention as you speak the main content will do you well. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu. You can schedule an appointment with us. Visit the Online Writing Center website. And with that, bid you good night.